Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Caitlin and this time we get to look at three absolute cuties while this pans out. Even though this piece does still make sense out of context, I was inspired by June's Kitchen, a channel here on YouTube. June lives in Japan with his wife Rachel, who is American. They have a few channels where they vlog or show some great spots to visit around Japan or just feature their three adorable kitties. I was intrigued when YouTube recommended a cooking video with a thumbnail that looked like the feast had been prepared by and for the cats. June the human is the one making some pretty phenomenal dishes, but he lets the cats watch and keeps them interested by letting them sniff ingredients and stuff. On the other channels, you get to see more of their cats and understand their personalities. In one of their most recent videos, uh, Rachel talks about the differences between the two orangey cats they have, Haku and Nagi, and I was so upset to realize I had gotten Haku's eyes wrong. I had already finished this piece though, and I didn't have time to fix it just yet, but that's something I want to go back and correct. In this piece, Haku is the one on the right, sniffing the egg. He's supposed to have beautiful golden eyes, but I gave him rich brown ones instead. The middle cat is named Pokey, and he meows a lot. I usually like to work in a square, uh, unless I'll be printing for a specific reason, like if I'm doing postcards or a poster, I'll size it for that. But otherwise, if it's just a random digital piece, I keep it square because of Instagram. In the scrolling on Instagram, you can now have them any proportion and it adjusts nicely, it doesn't leave a white spot. I've heard that some people actually recommend a 4x5 arrangement because it takes up the most real estate on phone screens. But when you go to people's actual pages and look at their photos, it still shows up as a square grid. So by working in a square, I can guarantee it'll all be seen in that square and not crop weirdly or anything. But for this, the way I had sketched it, it kind of worked better as a rectangle. So I just cheated it by putting borders on there. Not quite sure how I feel about that, but it's what I went with. I wanted a way to see all of the cats all interested in the food and the food itself. I was looking at June's video thumbnails for those perfect shots of the cats and the food. There aren't many, if any, of all three cats and the food. And that's because Pokey is a little monster and doesn't behave as well around the food for the videos. He yells a lot to get fed, which I think is very cute, but not exactly what June is going for with the videos. Haku is the most patient and sits and watches more than the others, so he's in quite a few of them. I love all three cats, and I'm surprised to say I don't have a favorite. Haku was the original, and he's still a majestic and patient companion. Nagi is a dreamsicle-colored beauty, and Pokey is a hilarious chatterbox. They've all got such charming qualities, I love them all. For this, I considered having all three cats sniffing the food, but I decided that would be a bit much, so Haku gets that spotlight. I chose him because he's in the most videos, and he's the OG cat. He was there before the others were. He's also the most vibrant, so putting him up front allowed for Pokey's dark fur and Nagi's pastel orangey beige to sit in the background. June made a video talking about how he trains the cats to behave and watch him cook and not eat the food and whatnot, and he talks about letting them sniff all the ingredients as he goes so they stay interested. My cat also really loves to sniff food but not steal it, so I always think it's super cute. My sister's cats do steal food because they're little goblins, but it's okay because they're also little love bugs. When it came to stylizing these guys, I ran into a similar problem that I had with the dog from last week. I don't draw that many animals. I love animals, but in real life, I rarely draw them. So simplifying them and reducing them to a more minimized style the way I typically draw people that's still pretty tough. I've still got a lot of room to grow with that. I'm somewhat happy with how these turned out, but I feel like there's a lot of room to play with them as well. 
I wanted to try and indicate their floof levels and in their minimized shapes, and that, I think, both literally and figuratively fell flat. Haku and Nagi, the two orange cats, are really fluffy, and Pokey, the pen cat, has normal short hair. I also didn't include Haku or Nagi's classic tabby stripes, because they just looked a little too chaotic the way I was painting things. So, a lot of stuff got changed. For colors, the cats were already their own colors. And there was also a thumbnail that had this really beautiful looking bowl of ramen that I chose as the basis for this dish. It does not match. I threw in some other toppings, which may have been unwise, as I am not a ramen eater and I have no idea if these things would work together or work at all. But hey, as long as you don't look too closely, it's fine, right? It, it's fine. It's fine. I did look at reference images as I was working, which is why I'm so mad at myself for getting Haku's lovely eyes wrong. I definitely want to fix those later. As for the background, I chose to give a hint of plants back there because in their new apartment, Rachel and June have a bunch of house plants and greenery everywhere, and I think it's a great addition. In older videos, it's just their apartment in the background, which is pretty white. He does do a good job at keeping it focused on the food and the cats and not showing the apartment too much. I only know because I'm a creepy internet friend and watched their other videos where Rachel shows the apartment a lot more. I've seen this before, but I hadn't tested it for myself yet, that blurred background effect which really helps add depth and bring focus to the actual subject. This turned out to be a massive lifesaver as all I had to do was doodle a little bit of greenery and blur it instead of wasting a bunch of time properly drawing out all the leaves that would have distracted from the beautiful kitterbugs. I really like how that effect turned out. Uh, I was also very happily surprised when it came to doing the color overlay I do all the time. That yellow to orange to pink to purple one. Here for the background, I drew it, changed the layer setting to overlay, and before I could knock down the opacity, I saw that it had changed to this really beautiful color array, so I kept that and just went with it. I also chose to include a few flowers back there, just as a few more pops of color, and to tie in some of that warmth that you see with Haku and Nagi. In June's videos, he's usually got absolutely lovely lighting. He chooses to shoot when they got sunlight through their windows, and it just takes on this clarity and nostalgia that hits all the right tones for me. I wanted to keep that in this piece. As I've discussed several times, I'm really trying to work on lighting and introduce it to my work on a more regular basis. Not just room lighting, but all the lighting, all kinds of stuff. This, I think, was a really big step in a direction away from just plain room lighting and more towards something that's just bright and happy and nostalgic at the same time. Overall, I learned a lot working on this, and even though there are things I would change or improve, I'm still super happy with how this came out. Watching June's Kitchen or Rachel and June's Adventures is something that brings me joy. So I'm happy I finally made a piece all about the stars of their shows, Haku, Pokey, and Nagi. That's about it for today. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Okay, bye!